We had a great time in one of our stream team beekeeping chats with the Dirt Rooster, Randy McCaffrey, and Yappy Bee Man. Uh, Mike Berry joined us as a guest host. Uh, these guys are true professionals when it comes to uh, bee removals. And in this particular segment, we had a great discussion about things to consider if you want to get into doing bee removals. I hope you enjoy the Stream Team Nugget. Here's a good question. I know it varies with each person. He says, how much do you get to do a cutout? How do you determine, how do you work with folks um, to figure out what to do? I know you guys are both literally professionals at this. And so it got to be a little careful because a lot of people go out there and try and do cutouts and may not be familiar with how to do it. I don't feel comfortable doing them. I do have a BVAC and I'll do it out of, out of an old abandoned building, but to approach a structure where someone lives or an existing structure makes me very nervous. So maybe give some pointers and tips for people who are interested in doing that and maybe talk a little bit about how you, uh, what you charge or how you figure all that out, kind of just how you do your, what, what, what might you recommend for someone who's interested in doing those uh, cutouts? Just kind of some guidance. Go ahead. Either one of y'all, Randy, why don't you start off? For me, uh, I have a big leg up on everybody with that because of coming from a background as a contractor, I already know how to price jobs like that, but you know, if you're running around trying to do hundred, two hundred dollar removals, you're going to go broke real fast. I don't ever, I don't ever reveal my price to anybody but my customer, and they, and they don't even know how I came up with my price. It's, it's between me and my customer. But I, but I say that I have a, a baseline that I won't leave my house for less than, and my customer doesn't know what that is because there's a concept called price anchoring, and you can anchor a price high or low. So if you say, and this is not my minimum, I'm just going to throw a number out there. If you say my minimum is five hundred dollars, but this is going to cost you uh, maybe seven fifty. Well, when you said five hundred, that's the number that's in their head. So now they want to know why in the heck are you charging two hundred dollars extra? Because you're going to get bees out of it, and you're going to get honey out of it. They think you're going to get all this stuff out of it. So now you got to go into a, a negotiation with them. But I, I think probably the best way to figure out what your minimum should be, and this is exactly the way I figured it out, is that. I found I found out what all the pest control companies in my area were charging to kill bees and leave the problem in the wall. And so the very simplest hive removal for me is about where they are to kill a hive and, and leave the problem there and then have to come back time after time to treat for sugar ants or roaches or whatever else is going to attract because they just left 100 pounds of honey in a, and, and a bunch of comb and stuff in the wall. And you got a customer that now, now they've got honey running down through their walls and it's ruining their sheetrock and it's getting in their carpet for just just a few dollars more they can get me and i'll take the problem away so that that's what i suggest for somebody who's you know just getting into it trying to figure out where should i be contact some of the pest control companies around you and, and don't don't just call one because their prices vary greatly uh contact a few of them that you can find that'll do it figure out where you want to be what you think's fair uh, another thing is that you're taking time away from something else that you could be doing. I'm self-employed for 31 years now. So if I go out to do a hive removal, that's time that I could be doing something else. What would I be doing uh, and earning over here as opposed to coming to your house and, and dealing with your problem? Mm -hmm. So I've got to, I've got to keep that in mind too. So everybody that's running around doing cheap or, or free hive removals, I can't do that. Uh, you know, it's not that I don't want to. It's not that I feel like I'm better than than them and so my i'm worth this much it's not any anything like that it's that i have to be paid for my time mm -hmm. or, or i just can't do it i i get the sob stories every year uh and i just can't do them i just pass them on to somebody else i'll usually give them somebody else's number that i think maybe will try it but those those people are few and far between and they don't last long when they go out there and start trying to do free removals there they play out real fast when they find out how much work is involved or they run out of equipment or whatever that's where i'd say start and if you decide you really want to do it figure out how to bid a construction job because that's all you're doing you're doing construction work you're not you're not a handyman you're you're a specialist you got to figure that's out how to bid how to bid as a specialist contractor we had a lady come to me the other day she called me i went down the street to look for because i was going to refer it to mr ed because that's what i do with mine once i get mine out of the way i refer it i refer everything else to mr ed so i go down there and uh she uh she said i said look i can't get them but i'll talk to this guy and and she goes oh well i already talked to one guy and he said 200 and i thought that was kind of high but he said that was good i looked at her i said 200 man you got a deal and a half if he's gonna do it for 200 
and uh, they're, they're not, and he don't have to put it pull it apart. She goes, "Oh, well, I just thought you know they all think you win the lottery when you get the bees." Yeah. And I explained to her whether they'd make it, when you would ever even get honey off them, if they made it through the next winter, much less the summer after you got them. To you know, gave her all the rundown, and you know, you know, it was cool to educate her on that because she was receptive to it. She understood at that point. I might need mm-hmm. to call this two hundred dollar guy back because Jeff couldn't come do it. People, people don't understand it. If you can educate them sometimes, then they'll go on board with paying because uh, yeah. it time is money. I, it just is. That's not greed. That's just fact. Yeah. And and you have well, to educate. I educate so many people every year. I, I don't even know how many because I literally during the summer, I'm taking seven or eight calls a day for removal. Uh, oh. I, can't, I can't get to them all. I can physically only do three or four a week without killing myself. So some of them, mm-hmm. it's a yellow jacket problem. Some of them cool. scouts. Uh-uh. Some some of them are not going to pay regardless. They don't care if it's two dollars. Some some of them don't own the property, and I can't even you can't even fool with them. You know, if they're a tenant, somebody else yeah. on the property, you, you got to tell them, hey, have your landlord call me. I can't deal with you. It's not your property. You can't give me access to cut anything there. So have somebody else call me. So not all of those are are good jobs, but I go through a pretty thorough interview with them on the phone to figure out a pretty early or pretty early on weed out whether or not they're a tenant or a property owner or if it's you know if it's a tree that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna fill with a trap out i walk them through the how how the house is built how old the house is where they are in the house where they're coming in i figure out all this kind of stuff and then i give them a i'll spitball a price to them and you know if they're cool with it then we'll schedule them so there's a good question there. Um, do you automatically requeen cutouts or feral swarms, or do you give them a chance first before you requeen them? Yeah, I don't requeen them unless I lose the queen during the job. They, they all get that genetic, whatever it is. It, it's Most of them are pretty docile, and most of them are fairly healthy. It's, yeah. it's super rare to get one that's so hot that I don't want to deal with it. Uh, in those cases, I will kill the queen and just merge those bees with another colony. Uh, and, and as a matter of fact, I'm merging with multiple. So I come through in the middle of the night and just walk across a row of hives and just dump them on the ground and let them go wherever they're going to go. Yappy, what do you think? You got some, some guidance for us. What are your thoughts on this topic? You know, Randy, Randy does a excellent job of, of giving good, politically correct, nice answers. That's why I like him. He's my alter ego. I'm telling you, I could be, I could come up with something. I'd just be mad as a hornet. He'd turn around and he'll just say, little something and then I'm, I'm looking at myself in the mirror going yeah you're, he's right i get i get asked the same question about you know how do i charge for doing bee removals my standard answer has always been well and i and y'all please take this with a lot of love but i ask people this how do you compare your skill level to mine to think that you're worth what i am when it comes to removal because I'm not elect, I'm not an electrician, so I can't turn around and, and you know, guy comes out and he bids my job, and and I think he's too high or too low. I also have to think, you know, it, his, is he worth that or not? If that makes any sense. So when people ask me about what I charge, I ask them what they're worth. Because if you've got experience in this, then you're not having to ask me what I charge. You you already know what a job's worth. But when when you finally can answer that question, you won't have to ask it. And it, and it, you know, that's my basic answer. My second thing is when, when you go out and you get started in the, in the cutout world, there are some people that need to be actually paying these customers for how much damage they do to their house. My number one rule is you're always go, you're going to a house to remove a problem. That's first and foremost. Second thing is, is that you're doing it to a point where you're going to respect that person's home as well as the bees. And you should come up with an idea of what it's worth for you to cover your expenses as you learn the skill or the trade of removing these bees properly. You need to at least cover your expenses and, and, and a little bit of something to cover your hammer. When you get really good at it, you'll never have to worry about whether you're making enough or not. But always respect your customer. Just because you pull up in front of a million-dollar house doesn't mean that you're worth $1,000 an hour. I know people that say, I'm $100 an hour from the time I start my truck till the time I park it. But that's not doing your customers right. Um, I, Randy, Randy touched on one thing that I agree with, and that's if, if an exterminator can come out and kill them for $250, but you can come and cut a hole in their wall that they've got to fix and pay for that, and um, it's, it's going to cost them $750 for you to get the bees out, 
Well, you tell me who, what, what direction are you going to go in? Mm-hmm. So you okay. have to be fair to your customer with what your price is. That's all I ask. Do you guys, now Ian's question here, you know, when you open them up, do you close them as well? Do either of you guys ever get into that? Yappy, I saw your last one, you know, I mean, the structures were going to be torn down, but when you go into those locations, you know, like Randy, you had that, that apartment. Do you guys do like, do you repair the walls and everything? Do you put everything back? For me, it all, it all depends on what the customer wants. I will do all the all the work up to uh, usually up to paint. I will include paint sometimes, but hmm. you know I bid the job just like I'm doing a, a remodel or something. Okay. Uh, we just did one. Anthony Phillips. I don't know if he's in the comments here. I think I saw him in the comments. He and I just did one the other day, and uh, McGee, Mississippi. And he helped me with the cutout, and then I did the build back, put the sheet right back, finished it on the inside, and then. Hmm. Uh, the outside was a chimney that they had torn down the top of it to about a foot below the roof line. And that's where the bees were going up in that old, where the siding was missing. Mm-hmm. And somebody, they had already had two other beekeepers come in prior to me. I, I don't know what they got because they didn't cut into where I cut in and I got the whole hive. But they got something out and then covered that over with sheet metal. And the guy was just ready to throw his hands up. He was ready to give up on the house. So he didn't call me and said, hey, is there anything you can do for me? I said, I'm fishing to reclaim your property for you. And he's like, that's what I wanted to hear. So it was a two day job. I stayed up a, up there in, in uh, McGee, Mississippi overnight wow. and did, did the repairs the second day, did siding repairs and sheetrock repairs and uh, left the paintwork for them to do. Apartment complex, I'll usually, if I can save the sheetrock, I'll usually screw the sheetrock back in place, but they've always got a maintenance guy on standby ready to do the finished work. So I don't even, I don't even bed mud in any of that stuff. I just screw the sheetrock back up just to close the hole. Uh, and of course, we're every job we do is is spotless when we leave. We mask off everything. We cover everything with painters tarps and this and that. Keep the hmm. dust down. Keep the bee crap because when they get in, they they crap on stuff just like they just like on your car. <laughs> they do the same thing on furniture. Um, I never even thought about that. Yeah, so we we do repairs uh, during during the height of the season. I try not to. I do them but I don't want to because I got so many cutouts lined up. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll have a contractor that'll work with me and come in behind me and do repairs, but those are small jobs and nobody wants a small job. So it's hard to find mm-hmm. somebody that'll stay with you for any length of time. What do you do? Yappy? Do you repair them or do you, what do you do? I, I, I don't do, I don't do any repairs. Um, I, I explain to my customer what my process is, uh, what to expect. And, uh, I, but I tell them they'll have to have somebody come back in and do the repairs after, you know, after I'm done, I'm there just to remove the problem itself, you know, and you always got to be mindful of making sure you clean up after yourself as best as you can. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, wipe down yeah, walls, you know, put tarps down to keep, you know, but, but clean up your mess when you leave. If you're not going to do a repair, at least consider covering it with something. Don't just leave a big hole in grandma's ceiling or her wall you know, find some kind of just a painter's cloth tarp or something, um, you know, staple a covering up over that so that that way straggler bees don't come in and get into the house and cause them a problem. And, mm-hmm. you know, it's just, it looks professional. Keep it clean. I never thought about half of that stuff. That's why I don't do cutouts. Well, you think uh-huh. about it if you start doing them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you come on down south, come on down south, Brian. Brian. We have a um, colony that's, right across the street in the neighbor's porch. And I went over and looked at it and she had a bug guy come out because she didn't, you know, she didn't get close enough to look at him. It's a coworker, my wife's. And he said, those are honeybees. I can't touch them. You need to get somebody that will come out here and remove them. So she told my wife at work, Hey, your husband has bees, doesn't he? Yeah. So she said, you know, can he come over and look? She's got a brick, you know, column in the porch and i took a look at him and i just thought this is not even going to probably be easy i said dorothy uh no <laughs> hey i run from brick buddy i run well, my, yeah well my whoa, whoa, whoa. brandy road trip dude challenge accepted brian but here's the thing we're still not going to tell you how much it's going to cost but we'll talk to the customer <laughs> <laughs> yeah Robert Freeman's asking me how how often do I have to go behind somebody 
it's not very often, but it happened today and it happened last week. So, <laughs> uh, and more, more times than not, if I have to go behind somebody, it's a pest control company that couldn't get the job done. They came in and tried to exterminate the bees. I mean, I've come across them cutting uh, hole saw holes in soffit and trying to poison bees and, and leave, leave the hive and the giant hole in the soffit and cans of uh, wasp freeze, I think it was, laying all over the yard. And the, and, the t- and the homeowner said, they were so funny. They were running and screaming, run for the truck. And I, was, <laughs> I bet they were. <laughs> we do have some pest control companies around here that uh, some of those guys are actual beekeepers. And I, I did a recent <laughs> video with one who is a, a uh, I can't even remember the name of the company he works for, but he's a beekeeper and he helped with the removal. I, I've never done construction. So, I mean, I, I just, I do stuff around the house. I've, I've drywalled, yeah. I've done all that kind of stuff. I've done little electrical, but I would have no clue. And, and up here, we don't get many. Like I see down South, like Mike was already doing that one. And I'm like, oh, yeah. man, we up here, we, you know, we get, we get a lot of swarms when the swarm season hits, but we don't have a lot of structures like what you all do, you know, with bees in them. I think it just, I think it gets too cold up here. Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know. The, the more heavily populated area you're in, the more you're going to find. And, and South Louisiana, for some reason, gets the most impressive feral colonies of anywhere around here. We get the ones that I pull for every one I pull, Mr. Ed gets one double that size. Wow. And it, it, it eats me up. I can't stand it. <laughs> and he won't, and he won't let me come helping on them. Cause I just, I just want to come over there and get a picture with him, but he won't let me do it. You were, you were supposed to be at that one we did uh, that I did with him. And uh, I yeah. even, he told me even to show up late. He said, look, I want to be out there at, at seven, seven 30. And he's like, yeah, well, we need to wait a little bit longer. I'm like, why? He's like, somebody else might be coming. And like, but he never did tell me where it was. That's the problem. Yeah. So I, then I, I, put I, a, I put a GPS on him one time and he threw it away. <laughs> yeah. He, I, he shows up with Charlie. I'm like, where's the dirt rooster? And he's like, ah, yeah, he ain't coming. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun. Lots of great information shared. These guys are always a hoot and a blast to have on with us, and uh, we appreciate them coming on. We do these Stream Team Live Bee Chats on Wednesday nights at 8 o'clock Eastern. We rotate through my channel here at Bruce's Bees, Brian's channel at Castle Hives, and Greg's channel at Nature's Image Farm. Uh, you can go down below for the description to find links to the channels and also a uh, link to the original full-length video for this beekeeping chat. You can join our Facebook group, uh, Stream Team Beekeeping Chat, and uh, find out about future videos that are coming up as well as events. Uh, You can also find more of these nuggets in the playlist here at Bruce's Bees titled uh, Stream Team Nuggets. If you'd like to see another Stream Team Nugget about overcoming adversity, you can watch that Stream Team Nugget right here. Y'all take care, be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one.